Hi. Different backdrop today because I'm not inside. However, since this is not a garage video today, we're going to continue going over some SD cards and buffer speeds on the R7, as well as I want to explain an issue I found with the R7, which, though annoying, very easy to work around. I'm also going to explain some differences with file sizes and how different settings, though not all settings, can affect your file size. So stick around and we'll go over that all now shortly. Now most of today's video I will not actually be in it, I've been relatively unwell and I don't want to be in front of the camera while I'm sick. But I can do a voiceover now that I'm well, but I just don't have time to film, you know, my face for this entire thing. So, quick bullet points over what we're going over today. One, I found an issue with the R7, not ideal, but I found a workaround so it's not a problem. Two, we're going to continue on the conversations about buffer and SD card speeds and how those two tie together. Three. I've got some quick comparisons between a RAW and a C-RAW in terms of file size, not in terms of quality. I find quality very much a personal preference, so make your own call there. Four, we're going to go and look at some file size differences when you start to crank up the ISO, just to give an example of what to expect. So the first thing that we're going to go over is just a real quick and simple table that you'll see in front of you right now. That is the ISO and F-stop, one stop over. So what I mean by that, uh, as you can see from the values, I'm just increasing the f-stop and the ISO respectively to ensure I'm moving one entire stop of light across and keeping it consistent. There's not much to say here. If you increase the ISO but, and increase the f-stop or otherwise utilize ISO to increase the light available in the photo, you utilize more space on the chip. So that is the first thing we're going to cover today. Second thing we're going to cover, this is when I just cranked up the ISO and the ISO alone. I keep the f-stop the same, and for that matter I keep the aperture the same in all of these photos. I did not change it, I did not want to add another variable. On the first three lines you can see the size increases as I start to crank up the ISO. Once we get to 800 ISO though, the photo was getting very much washed out, it was very white. So at that point you start to lose detail, you start to save space. All white, all black photo is more space efficient than actual information. Moving on to the third graph I've got here, we have the f-stop change. Now you'll notice that as the f-stop has increased ISO and for this matter aperture stays the same, the file size is decreasing. We are just losing detail. It's as simple as that. Now I mentioned in my last video in the garage update that I was working on the roof. Here's some quick clip of me actually working on the roof just to show what I was actually trying to get done that day. Now this next segment, is, there's, there's no easy way to go through this, this is going to be pretty dry, but if you bear with me we'll go through it right now. I'm aware my lighting is not optimal here, I'm just utilizing what I've got at this time. Now let's move on to this big table here and I'll give you guys the rundown of it. First thing we want to go is, I'm not going to walk through every single one of these, it's, it's not relevant. The first thing, I've done micro SD cards and I've done SD cards. I have done single cards, I've also done double up cards. So when I say double up cards, it's two of the same card. So the first thing to point out, um, some of these are repeats from last time. The Adata, for example, is a repeat and so are some of the Strontiums and the SanDisk. Specifically the SanDisk Extreme Pro. Now, there's not really any surprises on here. Um, down the bottom most, there's two surprise cards, which are the oldest cards I could find. I actually have never matched pair, which was a real, real bonus. Two gigabyte cards, just forget about it. The cards in question are extremely slow. It took ages, as you can see there. I've got 380 seconds to write 40 photos to those cards, at which point the card was also nearly completely full. Don't get two gigabyte cards. Uh, to be honest, having done all my testing, don't get anything below 16. 16 gigabyte cards, though you can get faster ones, there's just not much space on them. Now moving on to some interesting discoveries, I've got these 256 gigabyte Kingston drives, that's the second and third row, I'll give you the full name below. They are my newest cards, they've got really good reads and they've got perfectly acceptable writes. 
uh, top of the line as far as I'm concerned for rights without going into the UHS 2 category which also greatly increases their price. When you have one or two cards in the camera, for all intents and purposes, there is no discernible difference unless you go and go into the slow setting, which is the slowest continuous shooting mode the R7 has. At which point, well, yes, you can get another 30 photos, but at that point, doing 100 photos, it was, I believe, only three or four shots a second, if even that. It's, it was over 30 seconds of shooting continuously at that point. So uh, from my point of view, it doesn't matter. It might matter to you, but to me it did not. The, sorry, the surprise card was the micro SD cards, the, specifically the Samsung Evo Plus. That card works really, really well. Its speeds were, for all intents and purposes, comparable to the full-size SD cards. Some newer, some a little bit older, but it was comparable. Um, all of the slower ones that on the slow FPS have a sub or 50 or sub 50 That's just they are slower cards. There's no real benefit The speed at which the camera can write photos out of the buffer onto the chip becomes most important when you're doing the slow Err speeds so the, the fully slow one That's when you'll notice it the most because the camera's actually got a chance to move the photos over on the 15 shots per second the 15 FPS it's important for example, when I'm using the Aday to 64 gigabyte card, I get an extra 10 shots, but when I'm shooting at 30 shots per second, with a margin of error of my tests, it was all the same. I don't recommend slow cards if you're doing anything, anything at all really, but you don't necessarily need to splash out, which this is just the same findings we had in the last video, so there's nothing more to add there. But it's just a few more results. Um, I won't talk any more about it, but if you want to look over more, please do pause and just have a look. I tested everything three times except for those two gigabyte chips at the bottom. The DNF is just, they did not finish slash. I was not patient enough to wait for that long again. They were slow cards. With all of those values now discussed and my general explanation of what other findings I found, such as the ISO settings, the FSOS setting, F stop settings, is the difference between RAW and CRAW. Long story short, you get about double the buffer. It will depend on how much light, how much dark, exactly what you're shooting. As I mentioned with the ISO at the very least, the file size does change not inconsiderably when you're starting to really crank that ISO up. Have a normal, I'm going to say, business as usual situations, or when you're just using the camera as a camera, I wouldn't go nearly that high. Really, 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 would I ever go over 4,000 ISO? I just find it too noisy. Doesn't mean it can't be used, it's just not my preference. And one thing which I don't have any footage for or any examples with the R7, I have found one issue, and only one issue so far, so this is hardly me complaining. This is me just explaining. Sometimes when I've shot video footage, so I always use the 4K fine, the, the, the highest quality setting. Twice so far, when I've gone to my computer, I take the chip out of the camera, I plug it into my computer, I've had a 0KB file where I'm expecting something in the 20, 30 gigabyte range, because I've been recording for around half an hour. The first time, I thought it was a bad SD card. I tried to recover the data, I couldn't, it all got corrupted, it was all a disaster, that card is now gone. The second time I got a little bit suspicious because this was a completely different card and it was also my A Data 64 gig card, the brand new fastest card I own. And I got a little bit suspicious. I did some googling, I couldn't find any comments about this issue being an issue on the R7, but I found some old guidance from the old Canon, I believe it was the D1. The solution was super, super simple. Use the EOS utility to copy your data off the camera. Even if there's a 0KB file, at least in my situations, it successfully saved all the data, created a new folder, nothing was lost. Since the second time was a personal event and there was things that I wanted to remember, I didn't want to just lose the footage, unlike the first time where, oh well, I refilmed an intro to a video. Um, I was really glad I was able to save the footage. It wouldn't have been the end of the world, but a little bit annoying. Now that is the only flaw I personally have found with the Canon R7. And for something as simple as just plugging the camera in via USB-C, which by the way has got plenty of bandwidth and very fast, it's not slow like the RP, which might be USB-C, but it's still USB 2. As far as I can tell, it's at least USB 3.1. I have a feeling that the manual said it was 3.2. Doesn't matter. The computer I plug it into cannot copy faster than USB 3.1 anyway. 
if you find some 0kb files on your Canon EOS R7, put the SD card straight back in the camera and plug it in via USB-C and try and copy that data off. Hopefully you'll find that all that footage is, or, or photos, I have not had it happen to me with photos, but twice with video, so hopefully if it happens to you, you can do the same thing to recover said footage as opposed to losing it, which is very frustrating. Thank you very much for sticking around. Um, if you've got any more questions about SD cards and speeds and buffers that I am able to answer, please ask away. If, you, if I'm not able to answer, st still, I ask away. Someone might be able to comment for us. However, if I do get enough requests, a third video around the subject can be done, though I'm personally not too sure what else I would need to touch upon. So if you do enjoy what I've been doing and you enjoy this type of videos I'm doing, please consider liking and subscribing. It gives me a good idea that I'm actually on the right path. So if you've got any comments or any feedback, please let me know. Much appreciated. Otherwise, I'll see you all on my next video. Thank you very much for watching.